All right, guys, Brian with Buffalo Beer Reviews. We are back after a hot second here uh, in between videos, and today we're gonna take a look at something not super local, but uh, I think something you're gonna see around town. I got this at Murphy Brown's uh, craft beer shop up on the corner of Main Street and uh, Goodrich. And today we're gonna take a look at uh, Grimm's Maximum Delight. This is a double IPA. And this was, uh, this kind of took me uh, a little bit by surprise uh, at how enjoyable it was and even for a double IPA I ripped through that four pack really I think pretty aggressively for a double IPA do you know what I mean uh, but it comes in at 8% ABV there's no IBUs noted um, Grim out of Brooklyn New York I think officially out of Brooklyn New York microbrewery uh, but the write-up says maximum delights a dual hopped double IPA featuring Citra and Idaho 7 uh, it's exceptionally aromatic and clean and juicy Hopped at eight pounds per barrel. Maximum Delight delivers all the big plush fruity hop character of Citra plus the dank green hoppy intensity of Idaho 7. Please are plenty of overripe peachy nectarine stone fruit character mango and hop resin. German Pils is the base malt for this beer bringing a subtly paler yellow hue. <coughs> Excuse me. That all sounds um, awesome. <laughs> So I give this one just a slight little rotation and uh, let's get it into a glass and see how officially awesome it looks. That was one of the big things. I didn't really, I didn't read the write up on this until a couple of beers in and honestly, I kind of forgot about the, the base malt and why it was a little on the paler side. So it's good to know. <laughs> Again, this is Grimm's Maximum Delight, double IPA. So you will, you can see this. It's a little bit, uh, a bit more muted of that sort of yellow uh, presentation to the beer. You can see that it's well carbonated and gives us this uh, uh, really kind of quickly dissipating head, although I didn't really pour it aggressively. You know what I mean? But um, yeah, milky and uh, matted and pale yellow and all sorts of, I think appropriate sort of looking characteristics for like a citra hop sort of brew um pills german pilsner sort of malt based do you know what i mean <sighs> yeah i get uh kind of like a watered down faint sort of citrus more on the uh balanced side with the citrus and that earthy sort of of flowery presence really A little bit more, I think, like a bitter sort of bite to the back end of the of the sniff. <sighs> yeah, I don't know. I think you can get a little bit of the stone fruit in there as well. It's kind of cool, very cool. Um, I think I I was looking at the Idaho Seven on um, online to buy, and it seems to be a very reasonably priced uh, hop. Seems to be you know gives us some good characteristics that might be something I'll use in the future yeah just kind of real faint citrus kind of um, real upbeat sort of aromas do you know what I mean let's get into this thing Woo! yeah uh, you do get a little bit of uh, you do get a little bit of uh, big boy Mr. Citra double IPA uh, handshake to that first sip. Woo! Mm. <sighs> kind of catches you off guard a little bit. Looks a little on the pale side. Looks smells a little on the on the muted side, the turned down side. And then you take that sip, and it's um, you know a reminder that you're sipping on a double IPA for sure. But it's nice. It's subtly sweet. Uh, subtly citrus uh, I do get some of the the peachiness to it really nice peachiness um, and that was a little bit of a surprise mmm and I think maybe some of the uh, aromatics got lost uh, I didn't leave myself much depth in the in the glass so now that I'm getting a couple of sips down and get some real estate some of the some of the softer notes are uh, have some uh, some walls to bounce off of and get up in my nose. 
Um, yeah, I definitely get a little bit of that hop resin vibe uh, with the, the double IPA, uh, and it kind of helps uh, accentuate some of the, the citra and the double citra-ness of the beer. This is super enjoyable. Um, again, and it's been a hot second since I had this last time. Yeah, peachy, yes, absolutely. Nectarine, stone fruit, <clears throat> I don't know so much. Uh, I'm getting just little bits of mango, um, but little bits. It's not, uh, it's not the star of the show, but little bits to round out the whole profile. They did a great job on that write-up. Um, I, yeah. I get it. Uh, this is really, um, this is a full medium bodied uh, beer, like right to the max limit of a medium bodied. Uh, and I don't know if it's mental, but the the light brightness of the beer kind of, you know, that's it's gonna keep its uh, light and bright medium body. The 8% is really well hidden, <clears throat> I think, in the Right, the citrus nature of, of the flavors, the little acidic bite kind of takes away a little bit of the, the harshness of the alcohol. But 8% is nothing to uh, shake a stick at for sure. Even the aftertaste, the aftertaste is, oh, there's nothing there. There's no, there's no strange mouthfeel. There's no stickiness. There's no sweetness. There's no, um, you know, uh, hop residue when you burp it back, and there's nothing. It's really, it finishes super clean. Um, anything else? Nope, this was a, this was a great four pack to buy. Um, and if anyone else sees, uh, you know, Maximum Delight out and about, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a no brainer for me, uh, to get that again. Um, I like trying as many grim as possible. I like their sours. I like uh, a lot of their, their beers that they've been coming out with lately. Um, but if this is the only one I can find, I will absolutely buy that again all day long. That's really about it for me, guys. Uh, I'm sorry about the little hiatus in between videos. I've been doing my own sort of homebrew um, exploration and stuff like that. So uh, I appreciate the, uh, the watches and the clicks and the likes and all of the comments. And um, I love that stuff. So see you guys in the next one. Cheers.